How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. G'day guys, welcome back to the Olufemi channel. My name is Nick. Today we are going to discuss my favorite After Effects plugins for under $50. That's right, these plugins are great. They get you out of a jam. Now, some of these plugins only really do one thing, but they do this one thing really, really well. So sit back and check this out. And guys, this video is brought to you by the Lyric Video Creator Kit. More about that later. So the first plugin called Normalize Track from Workbench is a free plugin that solves an issue I've had in After Effects since they introduced the 3D Tracker. So the usual procedure would be to apply the 3D tracker to a piece of footage, wait a million years, set the ground plane, and then add a camera and a solid to the point selected. However, when I started adding 3D elements to the comp, the elements would be way out of whack and be hard to figure out exactly where they were sitting inside the comp. So you'd have to like finagle around to kind of get it in the right position as you can see here. But by using the Normalize Track plugin, all you have to do is select the ground plane you just defined, press Normalize, and voila! Elements that you add to the scene magically appear in the middle of the comp where they should be, making things infinitely easier to start copying elements in. So the plugin not only standardizes the position, but also the scale as well, so you don't have to deal with these crazy numbers that the 3D tracker sometimes spits out at you. And this is what plugins like this do. It just helps you focus on the artistry and not on the technicalities, which is real pain sometimes because you don't want to have to you don't want to have to deal with jank. You just want to get on with the job. And this is what that plugin attempts to do. All right, next up we have Pixel Sorter. Now, this one is a plugin that Herman actually introduced me to. So if you watch one of Herman's early tutorials where he does this really, really sick effect, um, it's he's using this plugin called Pixel Sorter which um, basically, in a nutshell, sorts the pixels from top to bottom of your shot, depending on the angle, uh, in order. Uh, I know that really sounds kind of odd and doesn't really didn't really make any sense to me when I do it, but you can get these really interesting and kind of cool effects. And in some ways, um, it's, a, it's a weird one in the sense, like, I don't know what exactly the use case is, but it's one of those plugins too, where if you're just looking for something to just kind of make your stuff just a little bit different, um, especially for that digital kind of vibe. I mean, this is a really funky plugin to play around with. And um, to be honest, man, you could get some really, you can get some really cool NFTs going using this kind of plugin. It's really fun. Right now, the effect is actually driven by the lumen, the luminosity in the picture. So it's using that as the source. But you can actually use a different source to drive the way the pixels are sorted in the scene. So for in this example here. Um, as you can see here, I'm using the source. I'm not actually using two instances of this plugin at the moment. And what you can do is that you can instant introduce one source at the top. And what I used is the waterfall to start sorting the pixels on the picture at the top and then bring it into this. And you kind of cut this funky little uh, digital transition here, which I think is kind of cool. You can use um, basically different sources to drive the, uh, the, trans the, the way the pixels are sorted in the scene. So try it out guys it's a pretty it's a pretty fun plugin to play with like once you get started with it you can kind of come up with some really funky little things as you can see here on my instagram feed um i was just mucking around with it because i really had it for a while i mean dang i mean herman really sold me on getting this thing and i really wanted to see what it could do and i spent maybe like a couple of afternoons just mucking around with it and it's a really fun plugin to play with so give it a go all right, the next one here is called Shadow Studio. Now there's a version two out right now. So it's a really, really interesting plugin. And it's one of those ones that was uh, recommended by old mate Ben Marriott and one, another guy who lives here in Sydney, Australia, uh, a, an amazing motion graphics designer. And he was saying basically that, look, this is just something that you might have to pay money for it, but it gets you out of a jam a lot more times than you think. And he's absolutely right. Now I've got two objects here and Look, they look pretty flat, right? Well, watch this. I'm gonna throw it on Shadow Studio onto the uh, spinning cube first. So, and if you haven't got, uh, and if you haven't got FX console, you should totally get it. All right. Now, already, you can already see, it already looks like it's a 3D object, and I haven't done anything except just throw the plug, the default plugin onto the shot. Now, the the shadow is a little bit dark, so I'm just gonna dial it down just a touch. Just going to change the color of it just a little bit just so that we've got something a little bit nicer than that now this is a little bit different to the drop shadow plugin for example so i'll throw that on just so you understand um, 
Now this is the drop shadow plugin. Now this is okay, but it's very, very basic. And effectively you can get away with kind of doing exactly what this is doing uh, using the drop shadow plugin, but you have to throw on a few more instances. So let me show you what, I, what you could do is just sort of keep throwing them on. Uh, let's see. And then add a bit more softness and then we'll throw another one on. And you can see here, like it's already kind of adding up to being, it's a little annoying, you know what I mean? So you don't, you don't want to finagle with that all day, every day. So you can totally do it that way. However, Shadow Studio, um, dude, it's just such a great plugin in terms of just helping you get uh, just some really realistic looking shadows without having to do very much, which, you know, which is kind of the goal, right? We just don't want to have to, we don't want to work harder. We want to work smarter. And guys, if you think this is too much for just a shadow plugin, trust me, you'll use this plugin for something, for a job, and it'll pay itself off at some point. And people will be wondering like, wow, how'd you do that? I fooled some people with that, with some renders that I did that uh, people thought this was done, you know, in 3D, and it wasn't, it was all done 2D. Just using some, uh, using Shadow Studio and just some really clever ways to drive my textures. See here, in this result, not bad, right? All right, guys, we are halfway there, but we're just going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Lyric Video Creator Kit, which not only assists you with making lyric videos, but is a quick and easy way to add tasteful animated text to your Premiere timeline. Five Premiere Starter Projects, 22 animated presets, plus 10 overlay video elements. But best of all, no After Effects skills required. Plus, we even have a 30 minute masterclass to help you get going. So what are you waiting for? Grab your Lyric Video Creator Kit today and get started. All right, back to the show. Fourth one we got going today is autofill. Now, autofill is something of a godsend for me. There are so many times why I have to design logos, especially write-ons and that kind of thing, like complex looking stuff where you would normally have to go through and like hand mask everything out to get the sort of draw and effect as you're seeing here. I'm not gonna go into how to do the draw and effect, but just trust me, it's a time consuming process. and. None of us have got time for that. It's pretty straightforward. Like this is how amazing this plugin is. So what to do, let's add autofill again using uh, FX console. And uh, we're gonna, right now we're in preview mode. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna select a point uh, that we're gonna start in and we'll say around here. And then we're gonna select a set. Now this O doesn't click connect to the rest of it. So that's one of the limitations of this is that it needs to be stuff that is connected to each other. So it definitely helps if the logo is completely connected. However, if it's if it's not, you might have to select multiple points to do that. Now, as you can see here, we'll see how easily it does it. And right now it's filling in not bad. We can probably add a couple more to spill it, like to fill it out a bit faster here. So we'll add one more point here. Um, there we go. And there we go now. It's not bad. We could probably add one more at the end just to speed things up. Oh, no, not there. There we go. All right. There we go. That's not bad. Now we can turn the preview off and watch that. Like in just a couple of seconds, we've basically done a really fast ride on. And we didn't have to do hardly anything to get it to do it. Now, uh, that's a bit slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed that up um, and watch this. Cool, huh? And that's how easy that is. And trust me guys, this gets you out of a jam more often than you think. So it's definitely something that I think is worth purchasing. You will have to do logos at some point and sometimes they're really intricate. So this is great for that kind of stuff, especially with stuff with really intricate lattice sort of stuff. You want to get this kind of plugin. All right, guys, we come to the last plugin on this list that's under $50 and it is a good one. Now, again, Herman showed me this one and I got to admit, I was a little bit hesitant to want to buy this one because there is already a, Go, a Glow plugin built into After Effects, but I got to admit, it's a little weak. Like it is really, really weak. And there's a lot of things you got to do to kind of make it work in a way that I think is kind of useful. But watch this. We're going to throw on the Deep Glow plugin onto this thing because it is just, wow. It'll just change this into a neon dream. And look at this. Like this just looks great, just straight out of the box. There are a lot of parameters you can play around with, like you can muck around with the glow if it's too intense for you, or you know, it can really kind of dial everything down. But for the most part, just throwing deep glow onto pretty much things that you know should glow, 
just look fantastic and you can affect this in so many ways it's just a nice bloom it kind of the fall off is really nice and the colors are pretty accurate it hasn't kind of overblown it to the point where it looks like hot garbage this 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 effect is really nice and very tasteful now i'm going to put the regular glow on this one you're going to see what it looks like and look it's barely there you really have to muck around with it to kind of get it to do what you want it to do um it's not it's not very powerful guys i'm, I'm not gonna lie i've i struggle with using glow sometimes because it just doesn't give me the the thing that i want and to be honest sometimes i have to go in and really like do things like this where you know let's say i'll pre-comp this so widgets widgets pre-comped and then i have to do things like this where i'll duplicate it then i'll add maybe like a fast box blur and then we'll you know feather it just a touch and then i'll add a then i'll do an add to it so it's a little bit blurrier and then i might have to do that one more i might have to duplicate that one more time um just to kind of get you know, this is this is kind of the sort of thing you gotta keep doing. It's not great. This is what I'm saying. Like, it's and even then, I don't think this is exactly what I want. Like, I still don't think this is. There's a lot of work to kind of get to this level, and I don't like it. Like, it's not great. Um, it's just not a fancy looking blur. If I'm completely honest, um, you know, it just doesn't look great. And you compare that to the, you know to what we just had before which was just you know all that work and then you just add deep glow and it's done you know what i mean like and i wasn't even close to getting to this result like this is nice this is way nicer so hope that's convinced you all right guys that is it for today thanks for watching and if you thought any of that was really useful smash like on that like button subscribe to the channel and maybe check out a couple of the other videos that are around there's some really really awesome tutorials from the other teachers as well as josh and uh, guys, if you want to check out everything else that's happening with me, you can just go to Instagram and check out NickBenQ underscore motion. I've got tons of stuff where I post there. Just some interesting stuff as well. I, I talk to the other teachers. We post some really funny stories. I do some funny polls like, is Chris Pratt going to be the best Mario ever or the worst Mario ever for the new Mario movie? All right, guys, that is it for today. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.